Last episode, we left things with a little bit of a cliffhanger, awaiting our FA Cup opponent and knowing that Andrew Slate was going to be leaving the club. <laughs> also, I thought. He has turned down contracts on Barnsley and Shrewsbury Town. I have no idea why he's turned down their contracts. He's only on £200 a week for us, so I have to question how much the two teams were offering him. So, well, the 18-year-old is still here for now. There is still some interest in him. Swansea City are rumoured to have interest. That would have, of course, been a £500,000 bid. What have I told you that we might be about to sell a player for £800,000? When you sort our players by value, it's very apparent that in the last 6 to 12 months, our values have really shot up on players without necessarily new contracts being offered. I feel like that is a combination of just some high rep players like Jude joining us. Our club reputation's risen, we've played at a higher level than ever before in the National League, and a player who's attracted attention, and I've already mentioned, it's a lot of money, is Isaac Pritchard, is £800,000, and Pritchard is a player who's been on the bench a fair amount this year, has only started 12 games for us, so naturally, when our old friends Newtown made a bid, I negotiated and accepted £800,000. Now, I will preface this by saying that he hasn't actually agreed to go to them yet, and in fact, I did have to try and convince him to listen to their contract offer, to which he replied he would listen to their offer. Given the fact that he is on uh, £50 a week, I'd like to think he heads over to Wales, and while well, speaking of Newtown, our little friends, you know, their little tycoon takeover, they've just sacked their manager. If this wasn't the going as well as it is at Rugby Town, I feel like this would have been a very tempting move, wouldn't it, to go to Newtown with their tycoon owner? But you know what? We're not going to Newtown. I'm going to hope that they can just keep being our BFFs. Because right now, I feel like they should be our affiliate. They've, they've done some great work for our club in recent years. So will Pritchard leave for £800,000? I suppose we'll find out at some point in this video. Now, of course, we are back today for the FA Cup. We have been drawn against Leeds United. We knew it was going to be Leeds or Oxford of the Championship. It has turned out to be the Premier League side, who right now are sat in mid-table. They're in 12th. They're actually going quite well. Uh, given the fact they have been a yo-yo team in recent years. Maybe this time around, they will establish themselves in the Premier League. The January transfer window is still open. I've just realised we've not even run the intro yet. We'll run the intro now, and I'll introduce you to the new player who uh, can't play the position I'm going to play him in. I'll explain in a moment. Today, by the way, is episode number 32 of Park to Prem, and here we have number 15 of Rugby Town, Brody Spencer. 14 caps for Northern Ireland. Can play left back, can play right back. Really, really versatile player. Um, bit weird how versatile he is, given the fact he's got a very weak left foot, but he is a super consistent player who loves important matches. He's joined us on £650 a week, and I intend to play him as a defensive midfielder. Is that a crazy idea? I mean, he's already competent at the position, so I'm hoping he'll pick it up quickly. But I do feel like defensively in the midfield, we've been lacking a little bit this year. At points, of course, Shipston has done a job for us. Gucci has filled in there from time to time. And even A-Hole Chuddy has played as the defensive midfielder for us. But ultimately, when you compare all of these players to Brody Spencer's polygon and his attributes... I think it's safe to say that Brody is going to be a good little addition to the team. I think Brody will be able to establish himself as our go-to defensive midfielder, but even if he struggles, his adaptability, his versatility in loads of different positions is always valuable. And with his addition, our squad size is now at 25 people, which if I'm being honest, when I look through the positions our players can play and the squad as a whole, I feel like now I don't need to sign anyone else. I think the only time I'm now going to go into the transfer market is if I was to lose someone, sell someone, and need to sign an immediate replacement. But when you look at the team, when you look at the ins and outs, I think it's safe to say we've done some good business so far this year. Now, since last episode, we have played three matches. One was in the Cup, that was against Barnet. FA Trophy, we won on penalties. Not a convincing result, but we got the job done with a very, very rotated team, it has to be said. And from there, very rugby town performance. 6-2 win over Boston United. Nice variety of goal scorers. And Goma with two goals, two assists. I feel like he's been caught in the shadow of Jude as of late, but the 19-year-old is improving an absolute 
ton. His physicals are going up and up and up. I remember a point where I think most of his physicals were at 10s. Some of them are at 12s. Many of them are at 11s. And to be honest, he is just continuing to improve. I feel like he is going to be a mainstay of the team for the next few years at the very least. Of course, that non-promotion release clause looms over his head. But should we get promoted this year, he is going to be contracted for the next six seasons. And well, I don't want to get too carried away, but with the 3-0 result recently against Halifax, we are looking more and more assured at the top of the table. Unfortunately for us, Yeovil have also won their two league games since last episode, and Rochdale are maintaining their form alongside Cheltenham. There is this pack of teams hunting us down, but we do hold on to an eight-point cushion at least for now. So plan of attack for today's episode, we are going to get into this game against Leeds United. Not entirely sure what to expect from it, if we're going to be able to win or not. It, I mean, look, it's a Premier League team. It's going to be tough. We're going to do our best. And rather than plan too far ahead, I think the plan of attack is to see what happens in that and then figure things out. Given the fact I've only played three matches since last episode, it might be that after the Leeds game, go away and play a little bit, maybe come back in mid-February. But we'll wait and see. Of course, with it being an FA Cup game, we do get two extra spots on the bench. This is our starting 11 we are going with for this game. You might notice Isaac Pritchard playing at centre, attacking mid as the advanced playmaker. Bradley Edwards has played this position a lot this year, but he has been struggling a little bit with his form as of late. Edwards and Pritchard have kind of been dicing it out for this centre attacking mid position. At the moment, Pritchard's been in slightly better form, but of course he might be on his way out the club. Um, you may remember he is on £50 a week at the moment, Isaac Pritchard. I was able to trigger an optional contract extension in his contract, I think last month in game, which added two further years to his contract. You might remember he was a bit unhappy. I feel like that kick to the can down down the road slightly but of course Newtown have turned up on the road they've scooped up the can and well I'm hoping they're going to pay top dollar for him uh, in terms of the rest of the team nothing too crazy going on I don't think Lissa and McLaughlin have just become the go-to centre-back duo for us uh, with McLaughlin's addition to the team two players who actually when you look at it maybe declining slightly as footballers. Maurice Welch adapting to his new spot on the bench. Hasn't quite come to terms with it yet, but he isn't kicking up a stink, so I'm not going to worry about him too much. Elsewhere on the team, Spencer's going to make his live commentary debut against Leeds. Bit of a baptism of fire. He slots in at defensive midfielder. You might have also noticed I am starting Goldsmith over Hamilton in the final third. Hamilton, of course, had that long-term injury. Still coming back from it, still not 100% match fit. He is on the bench, so we've got goals that scorers that we can bring on off the bench. I think being realistic for a moment, we're playing against Premier League opposition here. If we get a singular goal, take your shirt off, run on the pitch, really save at the moment, it's probably going to be a pounding today. But you know what? Make no mistake, we've made it to the fourth round of the FA Cup. I feel like that is reason for celebration. It's a bit of a shame that we're not going to get a big payout from an away game, but nevertheless, Premier League opposition in our own backyard, it's going to be a sellout. They're playing a very strong team from the looks of things. I wondered if they might rotate it. They're not rotating it. they got Jovic up, up top, uh, Lewis Potter as well. They've, they've got some good players. Of course, we're going to try and cause an upset, and we've been given a penalty in two minutes. We've been given a penalty in two minutes. I don't want to get carried away, but I'm looking at Jude thinking, you have missed two penalties. He has scored three other ones. Please score this one. This might be the most important. We're winning against Leeds United. We're winning against Leeds United. Drink it in, savour it. I would get my top off, but I want to keep the monetization on this video. Jude stepped up. The number nine sent the keeper the wrong way. Bloody hell. They've got a corner. We're rubbish at corners. Discussed it last episode. We're still bad at corners. My players, I've been trying to force them to eat Muller corners at the training ground to get used to corners. It's not worked. We're still struggling. Summerfield smashes it over. Okay, breathe a sigh of relief, everyone. Everything is fine. I am calm. Calm. I'm not calm. There's a goal kick. We're less than 10 minutes in and I'm on edge. And Goma rocking the captain's armband wide to slate. We thought he wouldn't be here. He is here. Can he put it on a plate? He squared it. Goldsmith's efforts blocked. And Leeds United clear it away. I mean, we're creating stuff here. There's another highlight from the immediate corner. Slate, Pritchard, might be on his way out the club. If he put in a man of the match performance here, I might be tempted to keep him around. Maybe not worry about the 800,000. We're on the attack here, by the way. Goldsmith tries to cross it in. It's blocked. Somerville 
now playing it forward. Spencer, the new man, rocking the gloves, giving away the ball. That's why you'll never play for the Northern Ireland national team ever again. Can we get back in position here? Lewis Potter's bringing it forward. It's a crunching tackle by Ricky D, a player who's been complaining about needing a rest for ages. Did rest him through the last week. We didn't have a midweek game for once, so he is okay for now. I have no doubt in my mind that come the end of this game, I will be told that Ricky D needs a rest. It's just needed. Anyway, Leeds United are still on the attack here. This has been such a long highlight, and now Albert is through for them, and Albert is scoring for them. It's 1-1. I hope you savoured the 10 minutes we were ahead. It was good, weren't it? I mean, last year we took the lead against all the Hanson Wanderers, didn't we, in the FA Cup third round, and they were Premier League opposition. We managed to hold on on that occasion to, I think, around the 80th minute. It's not lasted as long today. We have had a decent amount of the ball, I feel like, for a team of our level. Okay, it's going down quite quickly. It was at, like, 49%. It's now at 45 It's it Okay, the possession is just moving around erratically. I feel like we're very much in it to win it. They've only had two shots on target in the first 35 minutes. 1-1 one, one at half time would be very, very nice if we could make it happen. There is seven minutes left. McLaughlin heads it on. No one is there. Howard Bellis is going to nod it on to Somerville. I'll tell you what, Leeds are playing a very strong team here. Somerville getting in behind, squares it, and Albert Gamunson scores again. Yeah, it was just going so well, weren't it, for that brief moment? We got a penalty. We scored the penalty. Sadly for us, we've not managed to last it out until half time, and I'm not sure... Keeley can be blamed in goal there. That was like he was up against a firing squad. It's been smashed in from seven yards out. Okay, well, it's not ideal, but you know what? We have fight in us. We are fighters. We are going to try and make something happen here as we are on the attack. Look, we are trying to get the ball forward. Hold Chuddy. It's in his zone. He could pull the trigger. He does pull the trigger. Well, wasn't a good shot, was it? That was definitely a football manager pity highlight. The game was like, we need to give him a bit of hope. He, he's feeling a bit broken em uh, emotionally at 2-0. They've given me that shot. It's half time here. I want to claim we're getting done by the XG, but of course the penalty massively inflates it. What I will say is, we're giving Leeds United a bloody good battle here. Going to tell the players they've been terrible and to sort it out, but I am also going to just remind everyone, I've got faith in all of them. Go out there, make the difference. Let's try and make rugby history. I'm not very happy with Goldsmith in this game. He won the penalty. That's all he's done. Norman Hamilton on Newcomb. Brody Spencer is on a booking. Nobody like that. I'm bringing in Shipston at defence and midfielder. Double change at the start of the half. I was wondering about the Albert bloke who scored against us. Uh, yeah, bit better than some of my players, isn't he, Albert Goodmanson? He's very good. I mean, it makes me sick looking at him. I'm leaving. I'm going back to the game. Gomez with the ball for Leeds United. They are ramping up the pressure in this second half, and we are only eight minutes into it. Although, well, Judas won the ball in a great area here. Soon sup, Bell. What can you do? Norman Hamilton is lurking in the box. Brought on at half time. Could he get on the end of it? He nods it to Ngoma. It's 2-2, and it's such a good goal. Very occasionally in Football Manager, you see stuff in the match engine that genuinely surprises you. The fact that Hamilton has nodded this down rather than going for goal is one such moment. That is such a good goal. I'm going to take the credit for making the sub, by the way. We've brought Hamilton on. He's got an assist immediately. It's 2-2. I mean, if things stay as they are, we would get that big away day payout that I mentioned we might not get this year in the FA Cup. Although, saying all of that, maybe I'm getting slightly ahead of myself. There's lots of time for, well, football to be played here. And while we have the ball here, Shipston, Ricky D. It's 2-2. Two -two. There's 25 minutes left. Can Ricky D deliver? Hamilton's in the box. Look for him. Where is he? Hold Chuddy. Should cross it. Does cross it. Hamilton shoots. It's blocked. And then Ricky D commits a foul. Oh my word, I thought we were going to score there. I do have 20 minutes left here. I do have one sub in my back pocket if I want to make it. Pritchard, he's not played well today. I'm going to bring in Bradley Edwards for a bit of a spark of creativity in the final third. He's not been in good form lately. Let's see if he can turn up in this one. I say that, I make the change. Immediately they have a set piece. Harwood Bellis, Slate, half heads it away. I'm not enjoying this game, it's stressful. Subs made, Leeds United corner. Gibbs is over it for them, whipping it towards near post. Strike is there, half cleared away, but only as far as Gibbs, who's going to get it back into a dangerous area. Lewis Potter turns his man and shoots just over. This is one of those games where as they start to have chances, I think, do I need to change something? Do I go time-wasting? Do I go more defensive? But I feel like when you do that in Football Manager, your team just turtle up and you just concede a goal. I'd rather play on the front foot, play our brand of football 
and go down swinging. I knew it was going to happen. They've made it 3-2. I do just want to remind you, this is a mid-table Premier League team that we are properly pushing here. We are a good team. We have some good players. Their players are all just that little bit better. I mean, at this point, there isn't that much to lose, I realise. Should we just go to three strikers? Play Edwards down the middle as a more creative forward? I think that might be the play. We'll play him as a false nine in the middle. We're going to commit the wingbacks up the pitch here. We might as well go for it. There's, what, 10 minutes left to try and make some memories for the fans on the pitch. Let's have a go. I'd love a replay at Ellen Road. It'd be very, very fun if we could make it happen. But as time evaporates in that top corner, it feels all the more unlikely they've got the dreaded corner. Ricky D is going to clear it. Hold should he? Is he going to get there? He is a rapid player. He's kept it in play. Can a hold should he make something happen? He lays it back to Ricky D. Back with hold should he. Options inside. And Goma goes to McLaughlin, Slate, lots of space to run up into here, the wing back, goes wide to Hamilton, options in the middle, Jude is one of them, he's going to keep it alive here, we've got a bit of an overload going on here on this near side, hold Chuddy, Edwards, oh my word, it's free free, it's free free, we've taken a risk, I've brought him on, he's meant to be a false nine, he's in those, the box as a target man, it's free free, I can't get my words out, what have I just witnessed, what have we just witnessed? I don't know if I've ever been so excited about a game of football manager. It's 3-3 free free against Premier League Leeds United. There's added time left in this game. Palmy feels like I should go defensive. Palmy thinks I should stay up with the free strikers. I've not made changes. Leeds are on the attack. There's a highlight. There's four minutes of added time. Somerville crosses it. We clear it away. We've got three players up the pitch theoretically here. And Goma, Edwards... Oh, I can't help but feel like I should have maybe gone back to our previous shape. They're moving the ball forward here, Leeds United. Harwood Bellis to Vobber. The Austrian centre mid strike. Gallagher is dispossessed. Surely not. Edwards. Jude is through. Ricky, play it to him. Norman's at the back post. We've got players in the box here. Surely not. It's squared. It's 4-3. It's 4-3. Edwards has scored another. I don't lose my mind, lose my words very often. This is one of those moments. What have we witnessed? What have we just done? Jude runs into the wide area. Edwards playing as the false nine. Didn't even start this game. He's got two goals in the space of a minute. It's Rugby Town 4, Leeds United 3. I don't know if I've ever had a result as good as this in any park to Prem ever. I can't stress it enough. This is ridiculous. I should change things. I'm not changing them. I'm just going to stare in the top corner. We've just beaten Leeds United in the third round of the FA Cup. I've been doing YouTube 11 years. This might be the biggest upset I've ever got. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. What have we just done? I mean, I said I didn't know what we were going to be doing for the second game of today's episode. I can tell you what it's going to be. It's going to be the FA Cup fifth round. I hope that's okay with everyone. I can't... I, I genuinely lo lost for words as to what I've just seen there. Shrewsbury Town have just beaten... Shrewsbury have just beaten Liverpool 4-0. What is going on in the FA Cup? Stockport have knocked out Brentford. We're going to win the whole thing, I've decided. Now, we'll, we'll play... I don't know, we'll, we'll play Plymouth Argyle in the final. Oh my word. Yeah, it's probably up there with one of the greatest parts of Prem moments ever. I hope you drank that in. I apologise for the fact the commentary just involved me shrieking at various points. I feel like it's probably justified. Bradley Edwards, you were superb. What a turnaround. Two goals in the 90th minute to beat Leeds United of the Premier League. I'm just going to look at the full stadium. I hope that's fine. Look at all the fans. How much money do we get for winning this round? I didn't even check it. The fifth round draw is about to be made. There's only eight games drawn. This is going to be a nice quick draw. Who are we going to get? I want an away day against a big Premier League team. There's quite a lot of championship teams left in, isn't there? I'm noticing here. Who are we going to get? Manchester City away would be nice. Manchester City away is what we're going to get. That is going to be absolutely mad for money. When is that game? Okay, that game is now scheduled for the 23rd of February. That is a long way away, but you know what? I've never been so keen to play a load of football manager. I'm going to go play a load of matches. We're going to play Man City today. I hope that's okay with everyone. I can't believe what I've just witnessed. I I, I, I can't believe it. I, that is... That's bonkers. Wow. Got a bit caught up with the whole Man City thing. Uh, forgot that Pritchard might be leaving us. He's not leaving us. He's turned down Newtown. 
I mean, the £800,000 would have been nice. At the moment, it doesn't feel quite as essential. Anyway, I've still got eight games to play. Seven in the league, one in the cup, FA trophy that is. I'm just excited for the Man C. I don't know if you can tell. I figured since I've got to play for a month of Football Manager, I might as well give you some updates as things happen. Speaking of which, we're under transfer embargo. Yeah, it's the 3rd of February in game. I was actually about to sign Tim here. Tim, whose last name I can't say. I can't now sign him because we're under transfer embargo. So shout out to the new board. And apparently there's two consortiums, one run by New Brian and one run by Rob Wilson. Wilson has criticised his challenger for declaring that a new manager would be installed. I really hope that New Brian doesn't become our new chairman. Also, just while I'm here, one deadline day sale, Andrew Slate to Swansea. £700,000. It's £400,000 up front and then £300,000 in the summer, six months later. 50% profit sell on and... He's back on loan for the year. So, uh, yeah, Slate has now officially left the building. He will be going to Swansea at the end of the season, but nevertheless, £700,000 for this guy's good. We've got a load of money in the bank. And actually, I did get a bit carried away after the last FA Cup game and ask if we could go professional and increase our youth level. Uh, it was rejected by the old board, but now there's a new board, maybe. So if the takeover happens... I'll probably be back giving you another update. It's only been five days, I think, since the last TakeOver chat that we had. The TakeOver's happened. New Brian is here. And good news, he's not fired me yet. Uh, that's promising. His expectations and, well, aims for the club really aren't that different to what we are already doing. Um, they want us to reach the National League playoffs this year. I think that will be okay. And now the transfer embargo has been lifted. If I do want to go back and sign Tim... I can go back and sign Tim. Tim, how much do you want? Let's, let's have a chat with him. Tim, fringe player. Okay, I am going to sign Tim. And if you were wondering about the games since we took on Leeds United, four games played, three wins in the league, one in the FA Trophy. We lost in this competition's final two years ago, you might remember. I'd quite like to win it, and if we are going to get promoted, which is looking more and more likely, this will be the last chance I get to win the FA Trophy. So I am going to be focusing on this. Rochdale is a bit of a tricky game to have in the next round. Okay, so since the last update I gave you, not that much has happened. I say not much has happened. That is a complete lie. Some things happened. We've signed Tim. £150 a week. The new board would only let me offer him a contract for 18 months. But if we get promoted, it's got another year on it. And just on the subject of transfers, I promised myself I wasn't going to sign anyone. But I've been half looking at left-back options for when Slate leaves the club at the end of the year. I think I found the man I'm going to play at left-back. He can't play left back, though. What I will say about Jake Garrett here is he's a very good defensive midfielder and centre mid. He's left footed and I don't know about anyone else. I just feel like he would be a good little left back option for us. He may well be joining us. It would be a three year deal or two and a bit year deal. I think it would expire at the end of 2030. But he is actually an absolutely insane player. 24 years old, super consistent, professional personality, was promoted with Blackburn, but they've then released him because they didn't like him for whatever reason. To be fair, never really played that well for them. But actually, as a left wing back option, I think he could be absolutely quality. Ignore the fact he has dives into tackles and 17 aggression. I'm sure that will be fine. So he hasn't joined us yet, but he may well join us before the end of the season. Gives me a chance to train him at left back, maybe even start playing him over Slate, who, as I mentioned in one of the early updates, has now just left the club. Um, in terms of games since you were last here, obviously I discussed uh, the kind of National League games, the win in the FA Trophy. Four more league games played in the last two weeks. The schedule's been rammed. I've been rotating things like crazy. We have managed to get more and more wins. It's been a long time since we suffered our first defeat. Four wins in a row in the last, well, four games in the league sees us now really comfortably clear at the top of the table. And truth be told, I'm already expecting us today to lose to Man City, tomorrow to do the FA Trophy semi-final, final season wrap-up end of season kind of youth intake shenanigan bits and that will mean that to end the week we can have a transfer special. Although, when I look at the quality of our team and the players we've signed... Um, I don't know how many transfers we're going to be doing. Oh, and one more thing. This has probably been the title of the video because it's probably the biggest bit of news of all. The club have agreed with the new chairman to go professional. The, the, it's in the planning stages. It's not official yet, but hopefully by the end of this season, we will be a professional football club. Our overall balance now sits at £2.469 million. Of course, the slate sale contributes to that quite massively. The takeover happened. We'll be interested to see if that money shoots up much 
as we now take on Man City. Now today already has been a rather jam-packed episode. I've actually had to record and play a lot more Football Manager than I thought I was going to play as a result of that. No away day today. I have already done Man City last year. Who knows? We may well revisit them when we make it to the Premier League in, well, I don't know how many seasons it's going to take, but given how we're going at the moment, genuinely... I wouldn't back against us getting to the Premier League in maybe the next four or five years. Now, you'll notice here there are a couple of players tied, and I have been resting up the players as best as possible. What it does mean is that we are at full strength for today's game. Tim is about to make his second game uh, as a Rugby Town player in this match. We signed him on £150 a week in the end. What a centre mid he is. Didn't really have any intentions of signing more players when this guy became available for £150. I hope I'm. it's okay that I broke my unwritten rule when I said earlier, in this very video, I'm not signing anyone else. That was a lie. Also in the team, Goldsmith is going to start over Norman Hamilton. Hamilton has slowed down a little bit. Goldsmith's been in some really, really good form. Elsewhere, Shipston is, I think, going to have to play at defensive midfielder. That is because Brody Spencer been a very, very naughty boy. I say naughty. He got injured. He's not suspended. He just, he's hurt. I'm being very unfair to the lad. But yes, he isn't available. So Shipston comes into the team and I'm looking at Jude up front thinking, if you could pull off a masterclass here, you would go down in Work the Space Channel Legend. We are playing Man City. I feel like the lead result's gone to my head. We're probably just going to get battered here. This match is probably going to be over very quickly with me just skipping all the replays of their goals. But look, you've got to be in it to win it. They've got Diaz, Ake, Gvardiol, Nunes, Rafinha, Fatih, Alvarez. They've not really rotated their team too much here. I mean, at least there's no Haaland. He's not injured either, so they've just chosen not to play him against me. Uh, that, that is kind of them, isn't it, really? Fa thank you, Man City. Look, it's away from home. I'm looking at the stadium here. It looks like it might be a bit of a sellout. This stadium holds... Our... This might be the worst thing ever. Our goalkeeper's got injured, and I don't have a goalkeeper on the bench. This is the first time it's happened. All series, my goalkeeper's got injured. Against Man City... And I didn't put a goalkeeper on the bench. <laughs> Today might be one of the best episodes ever. I mean, who do I put in goal? Do I just put the tallest player in goal? Actually, I know who we put in goal. Reese Welch on the bench is the tallest player in the team. He is massive. He can go in goal for this game. We're probably about to concede seven or eight. Please do save at this moment. Of all the games that this could happen, and for the first time, I think, in the last decade of me doing YouTube videos, we have an outfield player in goal in a live commentary. It's against Man City in the FA Cup. I actually can't believe that this is happening. The script writers today have gone all out. We've had the upset against Leeds United, the board takeover, Slate's left the club, I've got my goalkeeper injured against Man City and now a centre-back's in goal. I mean, imagine if we take the lead. If we win this game now, uh, it will be the, they'll make movies about it. They'll, we'll be, they'll do a documentary. We'll be on Disney Plus and stuff. They'll, they'll bin off Wrexham. They'll go all out on rugby. I mean, being realistic for a moment. This game was already impossible. It's now even more impossible. A welching goal. I mean, good luck to your son. His, his emotion, like emoji face, is just a straight face. He's not happy. Fatty shoots. Welch had it covered. Everything's fine. I don't know about anyone else. I feel like, you know, the fact that Welch has just got like the neutral emoji with like a straight face. Like, I'd be having a lot more angry face, I think. If there was an emoji that's like shitting myself, that's probably the face he'd be pulling right now. Pardon my French. I don't swear often. I feel like this is the kind of occasion where I'm allowed to swear. Cunliffe has the ball for them. He whips it in. They've scored. It's 1-0. Enjoy your win, Man City. The game gave them it. It's scripted. Let's give Welch some credit. He did get down to the ball well. Sadly, he couldn't save it. I don't want to jinx it, and I'm about to jinx our eyes. We've actually done quite well to only concede one goal in the first 26 minutes. They are on the attack now. Can Welch stop it? No. Alvarez. Okay, now, now the floodgates have opened, haven't they? We've not yet had a shot on target in the game. We did just have a shot, so let's give ourselves some credit. I mean, we've not conceded another yet. I mean, if we keep it below six across the 90 minutes, I feel like that's a win. If we score a goal, that is the greatest thing ever. Shipston, Goldsmith, Jude! It was offside, it wouldn't have counted, but we did hit the post at the Etihad. In the grand scheme of things, 2-0, not that bad. 
I think. I'm happy with your performance so far, lads. I mean, what else could I say to them? They've got a corner to start the half. We did so well in the first half. They've headed it wide. We had it covered. Right, you know what? Three strikers worked so well in the last game. I'm just going to play three strikers. There's nothing to lose, is there? Pritchard on for Tim as well. Tim on his debut got booked. T Isaac, show us what you're made of. I like the fact that with my subs and the way I'm addressing players, I'm talking as if I really believe in them. Tim's walking off the pitch like he's pooed himself. We got the ball in the box. We nearly scored. Is Tim still walking around the pitch? Tim! Tim, he's made it round everyone. We've got closure there. And now we've headed it over. It's a bit of a shame, really, that I can't just put myself in goal. I feel like I would have done a great job in this game. We've limited their shots on target so much. They've only had four across an hour of football. I want to claim that Welch is having some kind of masterclass in goal. It's not really been that. He's just not been tested. Although, did he save that there? I'm going to claim he did. He might have hit a defender. Every time they get a corner, I just know that it's probably going to result in a goal. Can, can Welch collect the ball here? The ball's in the air. Gvardiol heads it over. We had it covered. They've got another corner. They've got another corner. It's whipped in. It hits the woodwork. Ricky D clears it. I can't believe it's still 2-0. It probably should be 7 or 8. Jude in this game has a 5.9. I might as well take him off for Hamilton, I guess. I've got one more sub. Slate's on a booking. I like the fact I'm saying that. Like, it really makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. Ricky D, go to left back. Batumba. Wait, I can't bring on Batumba. Forgot the goalkeeper got injured. We'll just make the sub I just made. That's just This is awkward, isn't it? In case you can't tell, this whole episode has just gone to my head. It's just an absolutely crazy episode, isn't it? We're on the attack. Edwards, you scored two last time. I thought he was about to score there. The keeper's parried it wide. We've got a corner. Ngoma is over it. By the way, Ngoma, one assist off breaking the National League record for most assists in the year. He's got one there. It's 2-1. We're not going to get carried away, but it's only 2-1 against Man City. I can't... Imagine if, if we win this now, if we take this to a replay, is it the greatest Football Manager episode ever recorded and put on YouTube? It might already be at that point, if I'm being completely honest. I can't believe... What I've seen here, we've scored, I've had a rush of excitement, haven't I? And they've scored, right. It might still be the best episode, but not for the reasons it could have otherwise been. It might have been a corner that we scored, but make no mistake, we scored at the Etihad. And that's more than what a lot of teams can say. We could score again. Hamilton, he's a big game player, is Hamilton. I feel like he, you know, ever since his hat-trick against Charlton, he's been massive. And Edwards has just missed an open goal. The keeper had already dived. He's hit it wide. That was actually a chance. Switch the plate. Go right. Ricky D is over there. There is Ricky D. Goldsmith. Shirley Knox. Can he score? We've hit the post again. Genuinely, we could have drawn this game, I feel like. I feel like we've been robbed. Okay, five minutes of added time at the end of this game is going to come and go. I'm going to claim some kind of moral victory. We were within 0.17 XG a Man City in this game. We lost our goalkeeper in the 11th minute. Round of applause, please, for Reese Welch. What a goalkeeping performance. Didn't have a lot to do, but did what he needed to. I mean, given how that game played out and everything that's happened today, it's been a crazy episode. I'm quite proud of the lads. Shipston's out for six to nine days. Our goalkeeper's out for six to seven weeks. Uh, okay, well, it's a good job that we've still got Tommy Simkin. We'll get him back in goal to end the season. We had, what, £2.469 million in the bank. We now have 3.278. That game there awarded us over £800,000? That's mental. Okay, today's episode has been a slightly longer one, but I do hope you enjoyed what just transpired. It's been a weird one. It's been a wonderful one. Like I mentioned, the league has kind of gone away from us in terms of the competition aspects of it in the last few uh, months. We've been winning loads of games. I think the signing of Jude has kind of just pushed us up to a level other teams can't compete with. With that in mind, next time out, assuming we don't bottle the FA Trophy, we're going to come back for the semi-finals and finals. It's our last chance to play in this competition assuming we get promoted i imagine next episode alongside the youth intake and fa trophy games we'll also have a vanarama national league title to celebrate we've been very very good this year i suppose that shows in some of the recent form this episode was just meant to be Leeds united and some other game instead we've gone pro we've had a takeover we've got a goalkeeper injury during a game and we've scored two goals in the 90th minute against leeds i mean if this video doesn't deserve a like i don't know what does Okay, next time out, we are going to be ending our season here at Rugby Town. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let me know what you made of the games today and the episode today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. Truly one of those episodes that will go down in memory. Back tomorrow, same time and place as always. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.